Good morning, everybody. It is now day three, I believe. Day three of actual corn planting. And now it is time to test fire our top air sprayer that we put pre-emerge on. So we spray 28% fertilizer as the carrier and triple flex to hold down any weeds that might start coming. We pull it with the cat because that's the only one that ain't. That's what this tractor is. This tractor is a 100% sprayer tractor. That's pretty much all it ever does. We just filled it up. We've got 28% there on the tanker trailer, ready to go. I don't know if I or Eric are gonna be doing it today. I just loaded some water on here because we always test fire this thing with water first. There's some antifreeze in there also. That's what the pink stuff is, RV antifreeze safe for the environment by the way and i'm gonna take this out make sure everything's running i'm gonna run over to a field just a mile away that has not been tilled yet spray make sure the rate controller is working make sure the booms are working height sensors are working everything was working there is dad he is just finishing up in this field and he's going 28 miles down the road to our farthest away field plant uh, about 124 acres there so I'm gonna try and do this quick before I have to bring fertilizer out to him but he's got a while to drive just admire that thing that is moving it's crazy that is crazy I know I've had a lot of people ask why we went with a high-speed planner instead of a bigger one we were thinking of going to a 90-foot planner but why why do we want to go to a 90 foot planner, big clumsy, when we have a planner and it actually is cheaper to do this high speed kit than to purchase even a used 90 foot planter. That's why we did it, gain more acres. We needed a bigger planter or a faster planter. Well, we got a faster planter now. For those of you that say, why do you have markers on your planter? Why? Why? You don't know how much cut up crap we farm and it is unbelievably potholes, sloughs, cut up, angled pieces. You couldn't possibly have enough AB lines or it, you'd spend more time on the headlands choosing AB lines, trying to understand which line is what when you can just put the marker down and go. We do not use the markers going back and forth in the field. We do use GPS for that, but for headlands, we use the good old marker. Never fails you, except for when you hit a shop truck parked on the side of the road. Then it fails you. Bad. Hashtag Dodge Boy Duggo. Guys are running me and I'm on the road. Look at that guy. He's sending it as he would say. So I'm gonna go test fire this thing, see how it goes. I'm gonna go over to Bakken's and uh, test fire the sprayer. You let me know when you're leaving and what time you think you're gonna be to that field. Copy that. Radio communications, very handy. Another very common question I see in the comments section, why do you have two radios? Why do I have two radios? Because these are just a classic CB radio get like half a mile to a mile of range. Junk, in my opinion. Then I got sponsored on Instagram for Midland radios, two-way radios. That's what these are. So we are trying these out to see how they're working. So far, they're a lot better than the CBs is what I've seen. A lot more range. The only bad thing that I'll say is you gotta have an external speaker because their volume is not loud enough in like loud cabs like this is why I'm talking quite loud. That is, uh, I would say, my complaint about those. So you gotta have an external speaker. But that allows you to mount these in weirder areas of the cab and still hear it. Another question that's quite frequently asked as I posted this last video of us getting the planter out in the field is why aren't you planting with both planters? Well, it is currently uh, April 22nd today. It's too early for soybeans here in our location. We're hoping maybe around May 1st start soybeans. That's why we aren't planting with both planters because the other planter is a soybean planter. It's 20 inch rows versus 30 inch rows. So you can't plant corn with it. You could plant corn with it, but you couldn't combine it. 
with our corn heads. You'd have to get a 20 inch row corn head and so on and so forth. But these sprayers are set up on 120 inch spacing so we can go in behind either planter, get on our planter tracks, and we don't have to worry about narrowing or widening anything. That's why we run these skinny pizza cutter tracks on both the 8430 and the MT755 that I'm currently driving. So that's just a little fun fact. 16 inch belts on them. But that's enough with the talk and let's get to unfolding here. I'm a quarter mile away from the field so we will get this thing in action. So we just got her unfolded here. Bigger than I remember. Turning the sonar on. So the sonar basically senses the ground keeping the boom at whatever height a guy chooses to keep it at. In this case, I am going to have it at 45 inches off the ground. So that will adjust to 45 inches roughly. And that just keeps everything steady. I think we're about ready here to spray some water on the ground. So I'm just flushing the boom, making sure it's coming out of every nozzle, which I am running a uh, big flood nozzles for 28% uh, so I can really dump it on. down the field yells you gonna move or am I gonna run you over hey I guess I'll move I'd rather not be run over so we're spraying just practicing so everything is checking out to my liking literally very smooth ride and we're in a chisel plowed field that's why I love these top airs they just are smooth oh he thinks he's gonna race me <laughs> oh, this is kind of fun. He's outrunning me though. 15 miles an hour. She is just floating. Yep, he won. He beat me. Yeah, I like this job. 150 acres an hour, one pass down the field. Oh God, Eric's coming at me. I don't know if you can see that, but the section control there, I'm overlapping right here. The section control shuts that all off automatically so that you don't get overlap. You better stay out of the way. I'm going to intentionally drive in front of you just to irritate you. And the sections are turning on. I don't know if you can see that here. The end one will turn on shortly. There it is. But that makes spraying amazing. hang on out here was that pretty cool leave a comment below if that's cool and a like I think I was pretty cool so now that we got this test fired and back on the yard I'm fuel in the tractor and see what the next job is I got fuel on there I charged the AC 
air conditioning. This is ready to be loaded and to go out spraying, but I am not going to be going out yet because I have got to go and give dad some more fertilizer and seed. So that's where I'm going to go now with this truck here. Eric and Steve, they are going to be doing dry fertilizer for the morning anyways. Get your done next week. Nope. Good deal. Number one rule of farming. Never go anywhere without your lunch pail. Even if it's just going to drop seed off because you don't know where you're going to end up. You hate to be starving thinking, boy, I should have took a little bit of time to uh, grab myself a mellow yellow and my lunch pail. Ain't that right? You know what I'm talking about. You've been there, you've done it, and then you learn. I always bring the pail with. All full of snacks and goodies. So, up I go now to deliver fertilizer and seed to dad out at what we call the farm name is Hipples. Hipples it is. Harold Hipple used to own it. He sold it to us. So we are going to be going out there, filling him, leaving the truck at a different field. So that is the plan as of right now. So here's to a 28 mile drive. Here we are. Rolling in. We are just getting here. I caught up to him, which is good. At least he wasn't waiting for me. Tight little approach there. Let's see if I remember how to run this thing. It's quite a homemade outfit we have here. <laughs> Long drive, huh? Terribly long. Yeah. Good. Seen Randy. What? Master pipe layer. What? What's he doing? Switch that. Pull this. Switch that. Open this. Hey. How's it going, man? Three notches? Yeah. Hate to plug it. Channel 201. That's awesome corn. You ready for some RPMs? Getting closer now, let me think. Got me all nervous with the big donkey tail again. Uh, Raise it up a little. I don't have my phone for the timer. I'll have to count. You can explain to everybody how I built that. Me, I, for $360. I thought this cost $3,500. Oh, I didn't build this though. No eye in farming. Pretty sure there is an eye in farming. There is an eye in farming, by the way. <laughs> in. Full throttle. Full throttle. Okay, I gotta get the liquid pump going here. So now dad's loading the feed up there in the big CCS tank and I'm filling liquid out of here into those tanks. One on the front, 300 gallons, 500 on the planter. So he's got 124 acres here to plant, so he'll easily be able to finish it on one field. So I'll be taking this truck to a different field. So yeah, that's how this works. So due to a change of plans, we've chose it's gonna be a better idea to leave this sit here. And so if he runs out of seed, he'll just refill here. Before going to the other field where I was gonna leave this, we are going to fill the planter here so that this can go back to town to pick up more uh, 1034.0 that we're almost out of. It's gonna be a better plan. So now I'm waiting for grandma. So I'm just gonna watch him get set up here and plant for a little bit. Grab them gears, Dad. Send it. Look at his little marker doing work. Doing work. Now the waiting game. He's back home and spray. Sure is nice farming like one to two miles away from the farm. It's 28 mile away stuff. It's 
amazing land out here. That's why we're out here. It's great ground, lighter soil, but yet holds its moisture good. Good workable soil is what it is. That's why we we're out here. And it's our only 120 acres out here, which is makes the drive even worse. farm now going to start big black which has the tanker with 28% in back it up a bit figure out what I'm loading which is pretty easy get her loaded up go test her out and actually spray a field loud little bugger so we got the map all figured out we're going for a 2300 and 50 gallon load on the sprayer so it'll almost be full putting triple flex on mixing in about 50 gallons of triple flex roughly is the plan so we hook this hose up here three inch hose pump start pumping that jerk was the liquid slamming around inside the tank totally a common situation ain't that slick This valve needs to be open. Now we gotta fill our triple flex into here, which that valve's open, so this is open. Triple flex is coming in. Now we fill up to the level that we so desire. We don't pump out of there until later when that tank gets empty. So Eric's gonna go open the lid so we don't collapse the tank when we suck out of it, opening this valve up. That allows chemical to the pump, which is not chemical, it is 28% or water. I misspoke there. We fire our pump up. And we're filling a sprayer. She leaks! Oh boy. That's leaking. Oh boy. A small leak. That happens sometimes. Gotta twist this just right. So now that we got our uh, chemical inductor empty, that up to give our three inch pump full capacity to fill this sucker up so now we got the triple flex in we just need to top off with this there is no need for any other chemicals so we're loaded up now with 2350 gallons you can see the little bubble there in the gauge i am going to fill some hand washing water on in that little tank there and some rinse water won't probably use the rinse water but it'll be with in case i do need to rinse the boom out or something otherwise i'm pretty much ready to hit the field with this thing see what she will do now it does have a steerable hitch right down there that we do not use during pre-emerge because that sprayer will follow wherever the tractor drives if you have the steerable hitch on we don't want it following the tractor during pre-emerge because if you drive on it with the tractor because we're spraying already sprayed fields. Well, when you turn on the headlands, if you drive on it twice, meaning the tractor and then the sprayer, the corn has zero chance of coming through where it actually does come through if only the tractor or only the sprayer drives over it. Little fun fact there of why we don't use the steerable hitch during pre-emerge season, only post. So I'm currently got the garden hose into the rinse tank, just filling with water. Right now, I might not wait till it's uh, completely full. I just want some in there. So I just got here to the field, flushed the boom to get the chemical and 28% uh, into the boom. So now we'll have a little bit of a dead spot right at the end of the driveway, which is nice, but whatever. We're ready to spray. We are ready to spray, so here we go.
pretty hard when you're fully loaded. I got it floored right now. Most I can get out of it is about uh, 13 miles an hour. When I get emptier, I do get up to that 14, 15 mile an hour range. So yes, this field is planted. I am following the rows the best that I can. You know, I'm looking for dad's planter track basically and I'm I'm following them. It goes pretty good. You can see it. It's pretty obvious. So if you can see those planter tracks, that's where the guest row is. So where the planter is going this way and then that way. That's basically the uh, where I gotta drive. If I stay on this track, it is impossible unless Dad planted over something for me to hit anything with the end of that boom. If I'm on the right row. So it's working a little better now. I'm down to uh, about 2,000 gallons, and uh, you can see her laying it down just beautiful back there. I love these sprayers. So yes, I am hand steering. I hand steer everything I spray except maybe first pass corn once it's out of the ground. Otherwise, it's hand steering. There's auto steer in here, but it, it's not good enough to keep it in the row, so I just hand steer. Now that I went around the field, I uh, spray 90 feet down the field and get on Dad's planter's tracks then. 90 feet, if I spray that down the field, get on his planter tracks doing that, I'm on it 120 feet, so I'm doing a full round of him planting in one pass with the sprayer. So it works great. We want to be on our planter tracks for one, because it's easier to find where to turn in. Yes, I've got a line here, but it's easier to see how to turn in on the headlands. Along with that, it's very solid, and you're making that hard pack for your season of spraying. If it gets to be muddy conditions, it helps hold you up. Hey, I got a ditch, I gotta go. So while I'm out here going to get the uh, GoPro for my time lapse right here, let's talk about why Larson Farms thinks that top air sprayer would be better than a self-propelled sprayer. I've had a lot of people ask this question. It's caused a lot of conflict between people. Uh, about this. We love this setup for mud, number one. Them self-propelled, in my opinion, are no good in mud. Something we deal with every year. So this thing, I mean, I've, it, it's been stuck. I'm not gonna say that, but where it's been stuck, you wouldn't have even gotten close to it with a uh, self-propelled. With that being said, so these cannot do any high cropping. So second pass soybeans, we have done it. It ain't great. Last year we sprayed all the soybeans for aphids and fungicide with them. Beans were shorter. Last year was crap. Everybody knows that. 2019 was no good. So we do end up hiring a plane sometimes to do stuff like that. But for all other reasons that we own these, it's the huge capacity. 2,400 gallons, I mean, I can spray a whole quarter. Like I can load this up. This load of 2,300 gallons, we're doing 12.5 gallons per acre, will do 188 acres. So I can load up when I'm close to home, load at the farm, and I can drive just a couple miles slow. We don't like to road it full fast at all, or don't like to road it loaded at all. But when we're short help, that's what ends up happening. I can spray a whole quarter on one fill, over a quarter. And that is such an asset to us that I don't think we could ever go away from at least one of these sprayers. So that's kind of the reason why we run Top Air. I know Fast makes one. I know Top Air has their new st track style, which I have heard is even more amazing, which I would love to try one of them, actually. Now, there's another good uh, point. This sprayer, brand new, priced one a couple years ago, or no, last year we priced one, and it was a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the sprayer okay chet well you got to buy a tractor well i can use this tractor now for a tillage tractor in the fall or whatever job i may need so yes you got to have a tractor but most of the time you already have a tractor that you need for a different job there you go there's my point to that why go and buy a four hundred thousand dollar sprayer when you can buy a hundred and twenty thousand dollar one 
that has a lot of other cool aspects to it. The ride is unbelievable. Like I was saying, we will go about 14 spraying. I have been as fast as 16 and a half spraying trees on in long, mile long rounds. But that's enough of me talking, but I hope that answers some questions and comments. But if you have any comments, suggestions below, please leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying watching this equipment operate. And uh, I'm enjoying showing you guys this. So I just got back from training Eric how to run the sprayer. He has experience running that exact same sprayer, just different tractor, so he's comfortable in there. He knows what he's doing. I gotta go get the seed tender to town to get more 1034-0 now. So that's what I'm working on. Well, we're having a uh, bit of delay here. Came to get 1034-0, and I didn't specify what I was getting, and there was two orders that I didn't know there was two orders, and they put what the guys are spraying on me. They put 28% on 1034-0 trailer. So we pumped it back off onto one of their trailers that they're gonna hold until the spray trailer gets back. So anyways, uh, my phone was ringing there. So long story short, we had to offload the uh, truck and now it's sitting on one of their Westcon trailers. I am going to be getting loaded with the correct stuff and hopefully the, can get that trailer emptied off, spray trailer emptied off and get in here tonight and pick it up so that we don't cause them headaches. This was kind of a miscommunication between three or four people how this all happened, kind of everyone's fault. So, yeah, farming, stress, it happens, is what it is. Cross boils are getting kind of bad in the yard, getting really soft. I'm gonna be doing some odds and ends jobs. We got that all sorted out, so that's all good. At least nothing bad got mixed up and got put in the plant or nothing. It wouldn't hurt anything that I know of, but would have been the wrong product. But thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Give us a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Later.